that there. That should be better. Um, so today I'm going to look at speaking of audio and getting the best audio. <clears throat> audio is super important in video. It is half of the show. Um, yes, video is a visual medium, and you know it 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 originated from silent movies. So um, there's a lot about storytelling visually that maybe you don't necessarily you know might lead you to think you don't need to um, be as pay as much attention to the audio. But audio, if you have it uh, in this day and age, where it really is a mixed medium of audio and visual, that you really need to pay attention to it to get the best the best out of your show, the best out of your um, content you're producing. Um, so, and obviously audio, if you're doing a music video, you want to have the best mix of audio of your song or whatever whatever you're doing, whether it's live or whether it's uh, to a, a, a recorded, a produced track, or whether it's from a live performance, you want to enhance that, whether it's for, if it's for corporate, as in the case that I'm going to demonstrate today, it's usually involving some voiceover and some music bed, and we want to get the best, cleanest sounding, the best mixed sound we can get, and obviously there's hundreds of other examples I could I could use, but I'm not going to belabor the point for now. But just to say that when you're producing your tracks, don't just throw in your audio and set it and call it good. Um, <clears throat> there are great tools built into to um, Premiere and other video editors, of course. And um, there are obviously dozens, hundreds, thousands of uh, VST and audio unit plugins that these programs can call upon that maybe have a, a more higher end feel or more, more sort of detailed control. But today I'm going to focus on just the stock plugins, the stock effects that are in Premiere, so anyone can uh, follow along with these. They should help you get the you know a basic, good sounding mix of voiceover with a music bed. So um, what I want to show is that this plus button down here brings up the brings up the tools that you can drag onto the control bar, and the one that's in question here is the loop. And um, just drag this down onto here, and mine's already there. And this will allow you to loop your in and out points. Now I've just set the in and out point to be the, the whole timeline, but you could obviously um, just loop a certain section and you can loop that section and it will. Toshiba's drive for excellence in CT. This new scanner rides on a sophisticated vibration dampening gantry, stable enough to withstand 20 Gs. Toshiba's drive for excellence. And so it loops back around to the beginning. So you haven't got to constantly click and rewind and, and, and whatever, which when you're getting, say, surgical, maybe you just wanted to loop just this one bit here to have to stop, rewind and play again. Now you can just. This new scanner rides on a sophisticated vibration dampening gantry. This new scanner rides on a. And unlike most of the built-in effects in Premiere, um, I don't believe they're real-time, um, maybe with, you know, a, a higher-end uh, video card, maybe with additional plug-in suites that, um, you know, maybe some of the Red Giant stuff, they're, they're real-time. I don't think the stock ones are. I stand to be corrected on that, but I do know that the audio effects are, so you can be tweaking the audio um, while this section section loops, so that is um, that's important. Gantry, this new scanner rides on a sophisticated. Okay, well, hopefully you're hearing that audio clearly. Gated um, vibration dampening gantry. Um, so, let's take a look at the. I'm going to take off the solo, and that just allows you to hear just that track in isolation out of the mix. And I'm going to reset my in and out points. And this is just some stock royalty free music I got from Audio Jungle or something for a project. So actually, I'm going to delete all of these. Effects 2. And so you can hear, it's 
full volume, full, the frequency spectrum is full. So there's lots of lows, lots of mids, lots of highs. It is a, it's a full, well-rounded mix. Obviously, that's great for music, but when it comes to a music bed in voiceover, a lot of those frequencies are going to be shared with the frequencies of the, the voiceover artist, and we don't want to muddy up that that sound mix. Now it's easy enough just to hit the um, volume and reduce the volume and that's fine but there are reasons which I'll get to shortly when we tackle the music bed that that isn't always the best and it's maybe um, it's a quick and easy fix but it's not uh, it's not optimal and there are some more less efficient but more elegant ways of, of doing it and getting a, a better mix. So for now I'm going to mute that track so we don't want to hear it. We're going to concentrate on representing the latest milestone in Toshiba's drive for excellence in CT. On the voiceover. So it's a fairly standard um, voiceover file that you'll be sent that you know that I get sent often from a voiceover artist. They record it at home and they send me the air and I usually ask for no processing as I like to sort of do my own. Um, it's again, it's a very full frequency spectrum piece of audio. Um, this new scanner rides on a sophisticated vibration damp. It's nice and clean. It's a great sounding uh, voiceover track, but it's a little boomy and it's a little bassy for me, for a female, female voiceover artist. So there are a number of techniques and what we're going to be concentrating on today is compression dynamics processing to um, just squish the the, um, the amplitude so we get a nice even even sound um, and also we're going to do some EQing to reduce that boominess and reduce that uh, that low frequency so um, in Premiere we have a lot of these AU um, effects. Now, AU, if you're not aware, is uh, audio units. That's the platform that Apple uses for um, for any audio plugins. Audio units is the standard Apple platform, and that's really derived from like Logic, Logic Pro, which is their digital audio work music workstation. And um, so all the um, plugins um, and virtual instruments and so on and so forth are, um, are in AU format. Now, you may have heard of VSTs, Virtual Studio Technology. That's a Steinberg technology, and that works in Cubase, uh, which is another their digital audio workstation. And there are a number of other um, audio programs out there that may support either AU or VST or both. Um, Premiere does support VST, but um, I don't bring my VSTs into because I find sometimes there's conflicts and it causes crashes so I stick with what's available in the, the Apple provided AU plugins and these are just what comes with the Mac OS install and then there are some op similar options um, for uh, that come from Adobe. So first of all I'm going to look at the AU options and then we'll look at some of the differences in the Adobe options. Uh, so first of all, we want to look at Dynamics Processing. So we'll look at the AU Dynamics Processor. I've got this file selected. I'm just going to double click the effect in the effects list. And then we have these individual par parameters. And if you know what you're doing here, you can just um, tweak these, these settings from, from the slider. But it's often nice to get a visual indicator of what we are doing. So if I play the in gantry, stable enough to withstand 20 G's of force. It's equipped with a mega cool X-ray tube. We can see right here this little red arrow. Representing that is showing the amplitude level of the audio track at a given time. So as it goes up and down, um, that's the, the varying levels of the audio track. And where you set the, where you set the marker, where you set the, the compression point, what they call the threshold, um, is where the plugin starts reducing the volume. So if you have 
volume that's wildly varied, the compressor will squash those loud bits so that the the dynamics, the difference between the loudest point and the softest point, you know, is less. So the, if the waveform is going up and down like this, and of course I'm just flipping my fingers around, you're probably wondering what the heck I'm doing. But if you look at the waveform, um, you can see that the, the loud points and the, the, the soft points uh, vary. What you're doing is reducing those, those loud points so it's more even across the waveform so that um, it doesn't get louder and softer and it doesn't really, so it sounds a bit more consistent. If you follow along, if you can sort of visualize that in your in your brain, this, this is what is going on with this with this with this plugin. Um, the latest milestone in Toshiba's drive for excellence. So it's fairly compressed or fairly even already. I don't want to compress it too much. Then it starts to sound overly processed. But I do want to just bring it down a little bit. And this is what is called the ratio. That's how steep the roll off between, you know, when the compression kicks in. You can get some gentle uh, roll off or you can get some very harsh roll off and that's called the ratio. You know, very mild compression is like, you know, two to one, three to one, um, up to, you know, 10, 20 to one, uh, which gets very, very, very harsh. Um, so I'm with voiceover, I like my attack time. That's how quickly the compressor kicks in. Um, sometimes when you're compressing, say, drums, you want to capture that initial attack. Or when you're dealing with anything that has like transients, you want to capture that initial transient, but you don't want, but you want to compress the rest of it afterwards. Or sometimes you do want to reduce those initial transients. Like say, for example, if someone is um, recorded some voiceover and they've got lots of plosives and transients when they're speaking, um, depending on how the file was recorded, then you might want to make sure you capture all that. So um, with voiceover, I like the attack to be very quick for the reasons I just said, to capture any sort of uh, plosives um, at the beginning of, uh, of words or uh, um, syllables. So, like I said, for other instruments or other situations, you might want the attack time to be a little, a little slower. Um, the um, release time uh, will increase to around five hundredths. Um, the gain I'm going to leave as is, and I'll discuss that in a second. It's in CT. This new scanner rides on a sophisticated vibration dampening gantry, stable enough to withstand. So here we can see what the output course. level is after we've it's equipped with a mega disabled after we've put the compressor on. Heat dissipation rate. If I disable it, representing the latest milestone in Toshiba's drive so for excellence. If I toggle it on and off, you can see that it's already reducing its the the volume slightly. It's in CT. This new scanner rides on a sophisticated vibration dampening gantry, stable enough to withstand. And the compression is quite mild. The in this section here, you see where the, the little red area um, above the compression line that is um, the amount of compression that's being applied. You can see that it's quite and twenty G's of force. Quite minimal. It's Let's bring it down just a tad. It's equipped with a mega cool X-ray tube offering the highest heat dissipation rate. But I'm going to bring up the uh, gain, what's sometimes known as the makeup gain. So when you reduce the overall level, now the overall level is silent, uh, more quiet, but um, it's more even. So you want to bring everything up so it's as loud as it was or louder and is also um, more even. So the makeup gain, I'm just going to add a couple of decibels of makeup gain and we can use the, the latest milestone into we can toggle the plug in off drive for excellence in CT and see that we're hitting between sort of minus six and minus three decibels in the in the main the main meter here so you want to sort of match that this new scanner rides on a sophisticated vibration dampening gantry stable enough to withstand 20 G's of force it's equipped with a mega cool x-ray tube offering the highest heat dissipation rate Representing the latest milestone in Toshiba's drive for excellence in CT. This new scanner rides on a sophisticated vibration dampening gantry, stable enough to withstand 20 Gs of force. It's equipped with a mega cool X-ray tube offering the highest heat dissipation rate. Representing the latest milestone in Toshiba's drive for excellence in CT. So. I've added some mild compression and I've made up the gain so it's a little smoother but the same overall volume. 
So it's the AU dynamic, the audio units dynam dynamics processor. Now to tackle the um, the bassiness um, for something like this, I'm just going to hit a high pass filter. Now a filter just blocks out all of a, a, the frequencies below a certain point. High pass is probably easier to um, understand as high cut, uh, low cut. High pass filter is a low cut filter and a low pass filter is a high cut. So with a high pass filter I'm cutting off all frequencies below a certain point and if we look at the we can see The, uh, the default to the high pass filter is cutting out all frequencies below 6k, 6000 hertz. With the mega cool x ray tube offering the highest heat dissipation rate, representing the latest milestone in Toshiba's drive for excellence in CT, this new scanner rides on a sophisticated. And so, just by playing, by pushing and pulling the, the, the cutoff point, what they call the frequency cutoff. Uh, the filter frequency cutoff, we can see where that sort of boxiness, that boominess is, is occurring. Female, um, even though she's got quite a deep voice for a, for a female, usually around um, 2K is where the, the, the dominant frequency in a, in a female voice is. And a male is about 1K to 1.5K. Hers is probably a little bit lower than 2K. She's got quite a deep voice. Um, but all these lower frequencies down here, we don't need those. They're just going to muddy up the mix and we want her to sound a little less boomy and a little less, I'm not going to say masculine. She doesn't, doesn't sound masculine, but it is a little bit boomy. So around 350, 360, mark is 384 and we're just shy of that. Sophisticated vibration dampening gantry, stable enough to withstand 20 Gs of force. It's equipped with a mega cool X-ray. So we can see already how how much boominess that's cut out. Now you can go into the individual parameters and then you actually can't add it in as a, that's a little bit difficult to, to fiddle with. You can't actually input the actual number, unfortunately. That would make it a bit more surgical. And that's where the, basic AU filters fall shy. Um, we'll get into some of the Adobe ones in, in a bit. But we'll leave that there for right now. You could, you know, push and pull and massage that bit. It's a little bit fiddly because the, the, the interface isn't, isn't huge. You can see it doesn't scale up. So if you wanted to get right at 353 or 347, you would have a hard time doing that. But high pass filter, the concept is... Asian rate representing the latest milestone in Toshiba's drive for excellence in CT. This new scanner rides on a... So it's it's a little more even and a little less boomy. So um, we could just disable these real quick and I'll show you another option. There is what is called a multiband compressor and I'm going to drag that underneath the other two. And a multiband compressor... Um, does that it compresses multiple bands so you've you have control over what the different bands are and those bands are frequency bands you've got the low frequencies the lower mids the upper mids and the uh, high frequencies and you can compress them at different rates to achieve much the same result so if i want to um let's see anything below yeah let's see anything below say 200 let's um compress that I click on band one, now I can compress that quite a lot. I can um, just bring the attack and release again. Let's do about 0.1 this time. Um, Sophisticated vibration dampening gantry stable enough to withstand 20 G's of force. So you can see already just reducing those frequencies it sounds it sounds uh, a lot less boomy and you can see the, the amount of compression being applied in these vertical stacks here depending on which one we've got selected it's highlighted in yellow 
Um, so I'm. It's equipped with a mega cool X-ray tube. And you get a good visual indicator of the amount of compression being applied um, just to that to that frequency. Band two is the lower mids. I could compress these a little bit, but maybe not as much. And band three, probably don't want to compress at all. Band four is like a lot of the highs. So we don't really want to mess with those and we can adjust the individual volume levels um, kind of like the makeup gain so EQ1, EQ3, EQ4 those are the bands that we're talking about here and we can um, adjust the individual gain makeups for those so the highest heat dissipation rate representing the latest milestone in Toshiba's drive for excellence in CT this new scanner rides on a sophisticated vibration dampening gantry stable enough to withstand 20 G's of force. So we can listen to that and adjust the bands. If it's cutting out, cutting out too much bass, we want to bring some back in. We can just bring band to... ...down in Toshiba's drive for excellence in CT. This new scanner rides on a sophisticated vibration dampening gantry, stable enough to withstand 20 Gs. So there again, it's quite loud, quite it's boomy. ...with a mega cool X-ray tube offering the highest heat dissipation rate. Representing the latest milestone in Toshiba's drive. And so looking at the overall meter at the side here, you can see him now peaking between 12 and minus 12 and minus 9. So I can use the post gain meter here to add again, bring that up a little bit. The highest heat dissipation rate. Representing the latest milestone in Toshiba's drive. So if I toggle that off. This new scanner rides on a sophisticated vibration dampening gantry, stable enough to withstand 20 Gs of force. It's equipped with a mega cool X-ray tube offering the highest heat dissipation rate, representing the latest milestone in Toshiba's drive for excellence in CT. This new scanner rides on a sophisticated vibration dampening gantry, stable enough to withstand 20 Gs of force. So you can get an idea of what each frequency band is is offering us. Representing the latest milestone in Toshiba's drive for excellence in CT. This new scanner rides on a sophisticated vibrant. There's a lot of sibilance up in the higher frequencies, so I like to take that down just a tad. Uh, obviously, most of the detail is in band three, with some of the lower frequencies in band two, which we want to control. Dampening gantry, stable enough to withstand 20 Gs of force. That sounds okay. It's equipped with a mega cool X-ray tube, offering the highest heat dissipation rate. So there again, we've lost some of the boominess, and we've tackled the uh, the. EQ and the compression in, in one go. It's a bit fiddly. Again, the AU plugin is not as sophisticated as maybe some of the, um, the Adobe ones. Um, not sure why, but let's take a look at some of those now. So we've played with the high pass, we've played with the AU low pass. Um, let's go in and we'll disable these and let's look at the Adobe. Um, so we have dynamics so you can see the dynamics we have a noise gate we have a compressor we have an expander and we have a limiter so it's a bit more well-rounded dynamics processing um, I'm just going to focus on the compressor today because that's what we've been talking about compressing the dynamics um, the expander is kind of like the opposite it's a bit more difficult to explain what an expander is so I won't get into that a limiter um, is basically stopping the peaks from clipping when you have digital audio if it goes over a certain level um, it's just going to clip and make noise um, so a limiter will prevent that from happening just by stopping the you know it's going to clip the audio essentially uh, before it gets to the to the digital noise uh, scenario and you can control which point you want the audio just to stop um, a compressor does a similar thing but it's reducing everything proportionally whereas a limiter just stops everything everything that goes beyond that level just chops it off so it's not proportionate if that kind of makes sense that's the difference between a limiter and a compressor they're very similar 
especially what they call a brick wall limiter. A brick wall limiter does that. Some certain other limiters have a little bit of proportionality to them, but a compressor is proportional by nature. And the noise gate, obviously, if you have some hissy or background noise, um, an, an, a noise gate is a fairly crude way of getting rid of that. It doesn't always sound the best. There are probably other ways to eliminate um, background noise through um, much more sophisticated software these days. So anyway, we've got our compressor, here's our threshold, and I'll bring that up for now. And here's our ratio we talked about before from one to, to eight. So it's a fairly mild um, ratio, although those those numbers may be just specific to Adobe. They may not have any correlation to, say, hardware compressors you might find in a studio. Attack, we're going to bring our attack down. 50 milliseconds for the release is fine. And here we have our makeup gain. So if I... Representing the latest milestone in Toshiba's drive for excellence. So right now, CT, up in the compressor this new scan uh, meter, we don't have any compression taking a pl entry, place because stable enough to withstand 20 Gs the audio is not reaching that level, with a that threshold. As soon as we start reducing the threshold, we can see how much compression is starting to be added. In Toshiba's drive for excellence in CT. So if I bring it down to about this 20, anything over 20 decibels is going to be stable enough reduced to 20 proportionately to it's equipped with the at the ratio we, we decide offering the highest heat as that Representing the latest milestone in Toshiba's As that drive for excellence. Goes over the threshold, and then the the ratio decides how on a sophisticated like with the elbow we saw, the, the, the graph we saw to withstand twenty Gs how quickly that noise is reduced. The, mega cool the audio is reduced. Offering the highest so you can see. dissipation rate. Representing the latest milestone. So the higher the ratio, the quieter it becomes and the more abrupt a cutoff it is. Scanner rides on a sophisticated vibration. For voiceover, I think between two and four is just some mild compression. Again, we're just evening things out. I'm not kind of slamming things. And if I look at my overall meter i'm going to bring up the makeup gain again a bit more happening gantry stable enough to withstand 20 g's of force it's equipped with a mega cool now we're back at the offering the highest minus three minus six representing the latest so if i toggle that off shiba's drive for excellence in ct this new scanner rides on a sophisticated vibration dampening gantry stable enough to it's very very subtle some of the inflections in the words where people maybe put emphasis on the first syllable of the word or the last syllable of the word, it evens some of that out to where it's a more consistent, even tone. Now, obviously, we don't want to take all of that because then it sounds to sound like a robot and it has no personality, but we're just trying to even it out so it feels a bit more consistent, I guess. So withstand 20 g's of so now we've got the dynamic sorted we can either use the uh, au high pass because the high pass where's high pass the adobe high pass filter's not really good it's just that you can enter in a number by typing in which is good you don't have any visual indicator so and it's a little bit it's a little bit fiddly i do like the visual indicator so let's just bring this back down below the dynamics and force it's equipped with a mega cool x-ray tube offering the highest heat dissipation rate representing the latest milestone in toshiba's drive for excellence in ct this new scanner rides on a sophisticated vibration dampening gantry. So, Sta while we're here, it's probably worth saying if we wanted to, you know, use this filter as an effect, maybe as a radio or a telephone call, you would just trim out a lot of the low frequencies. Able enough to withstand 20 Gs of force. It's equipped with a You might want to use a band pass filter where you trim off some of the high frequencies at the same time, but the low pass. Cool the high pass, the low cut filter. The highest heat dissipation rate. Re so for us, I think we're going to bring it back down to around the three hundred. Presenting the latest milestone in Toshiba's drive for excellence in CT. 
This new scanner rides on a sophisticated vibration dampening gantry, stable enough to withstand 20 G's of force. It's equipped with a mega cool. So there's that. There is. Okay, let, I think any higher pass. Multiband, right? So we looked at the multiband compressor, the audio unit's multiband compressor. The multi, the Adobe multiband compressor, is really good. It's got a lot more. Um, you can see already. There's a lot more control here, and so let, let's get into it. We've X-ray tube offering the highest heat dissipation. We have our graph at the top here again, and we can see where our, what they call the crossovers, where our different bands are. Now I want, say below, you can see the spectrum here. We've got this little dip here. There's a lot of low frequency muck down here, which we'll just, we're just going to um, use a high and maybe use like 10 to one right here. And we're gonna trim that down because it's a lot of muck we don't want. Um, between say, 500 and and six between 60 and 500 is where a lot of that boominess is coming from and we're going to we're going to moderate that this band say after 8k between 500 and 8k is where most of the the um the female voice is, is going to be the that we want to rate representing the latest milestone in Toshiba's drive for excellence in CT. This new scanner rides on a So already just by reducing the entry, stable enough to withstand 20 Gs of reducing force. the level of the it's equipped with a mega of the the low frequency we can see and I can um, let's bring the attack down again to zero and 100 milliseconds that's fine i'll just leave that that for now um maybe i'll do 12 to 1 and we can see the, cool X -ray tube the level of the, the amount of compression tube. being applied here representing the latest milestone in toshiba's drive for excellence in ct and it's already quite low we can see it's not getting above maybe 50 or 40. Entry, stable enough to withstand 20 g's of force it's so we have some very good very good readouts. We can see this graph here shows our decibel levels, and we can see that in this region we're hitting around 50, maybe 40. So we can bring this down to around minus 44, and it's, it's equipped with a mega cool X going to reduce that quite a lot, heat dissipation quite rate. steeply because we've put it like at 12 to one. So let's move on to the uh, to the mids, and. Representing the latest milestone I can in Toshiba's drive for excellence. If I bring it down too much, it starts to sound this unnatural. Scanner rides on a sophisticated vibration. But if I don't do it at all, stable it's still got that boominess. 20 G's of force. It's equipped with a mega cool. So if I use maybe some moderate four to one compression. Representing the latest milestone. And you can see the amount of compression again in the red meter at the top. This new scanner rides on a So it still has some well-rounded lows. Gantry, but if we disable, enough to withstand 20 G you can see force. it's lost a lot of the boominess. It's equipped with a mega cool X-ray tube offering the highest heat dissipation rate. Representing the latest milestone in Toshiba's drive. We can reduce this uh, two to one. This new scanner rides reduce on a sophisticated this quite a lot. vibration dampening gantry. We'll reduce the high frequencies again a lot to get a lot rid of a lot of the sibilance and the hiss. It's equipped with a mega cool X-ray tube offering the highest Not heat reducing it a, a, rate. A completely. Representing the latest now we'll in bring in some compression in, CT. in the main frequency this band, but we'll bring the gain up maybe a couple gantry, of decibels. Stable enough to withstand 20 Gs of force. Just a little. It's equipped with a mega cool X-ray tube. And then the overall the gain, heat we can rate. increase maybe two decibels here. the latest milestone in Toshiba's drive for excellence maybe three. in CT. This new scanner rides on a sophisticated vibration Four. dampening gantry, stable enough to withstand. So if I G's disable that, course. it's equipped with a mega cool X-ray tube, offering the highest heat dissipation rate. So a little bit more clarity in the upper mids, and a lot of that boominess uh, has been removed. Representing the latest milestone in Tosh. So 
okay, so that, that's great. We've been through that and we know what we're doing now. To help you, uh, you know, achieve that even, even quicker, even better, the tools, what the Adobe multiband compressor does, you're able to listen to or disable the compression on each band on its own. So we've got the solo and the bypass buttons here. So let's, what we can do if I... Jiba's drive for excellence. We can hear the, just the muddiness of the, of the, the low frequency stuff that we really want to get rid of. So that's, and if we bypass, that's what it was before compression. That's what it is after compression. We can even bring that down a bit more. So if you can hear that, you probably can't hear that. It sounds like, um, it sounds like Kenny from South Park. Or the teacher from um, Snoopy. So that's just the, that's just the low frequencies that we've solo vibration dampening gantry stable enough to withstand 20 if we solo the lower mids this is where the boominess is so that's with it bypassed and that's with it compressed if equipped with a mega cool X-ray tube offering the highest heat dissipation rate, representing the latest milestone in Toshiba's drive for excellence. So you can see that it's this can, new scanner, right? You can really fine tune. You can adjust these frequency bands if it, you need to bring in a bit more bass or lose a bit more bass. You can really just by isolating those those frequencies audibly visually it's great you've got the the graphs and everything to um help us visually but when we listen we're talking about audio we want to listen to the to the to the sound so let's just take it's a listen a sophisticated vibration dampening gantry stable enough to withstand 20 g's of force it's not a lot of difference it's there it's equipped with a mega cool x-ray in ct this new scanner rides on a sophisticated vibration dampening gantry, stable enough to withstand 20 Gs of force. It's equipped So with we can a also cool just bypass those. Offering. We can bypass each of these bands to see what effect it's having on the overall. In the highest heat dissipation rate, representing the latest milestone in Toshiba's drive for excellence. So a really useful tool, multi-band compression, helps with the EQing and the compression in one go it's a little more to get your head around and it's a little more work um but i think overall the results are are quite nice and clean so that is the voiceover we're going to leave that as silence in ct leave that as good now let's uh mute this and i'm going to focus on the Music bed. So let's take a listen to. Obviously, we've just dragged this in. This is full volume. There's nothing been done to this, to this, uh, to this track. And it rides on a sophisticated vibration dampening gantry, stable. And obviously, that's garbage. The music is too loud. The it's clipping. You can see here we've got this red indicator, which means the audio, the overall output signal is clipping. Um, so we want the voiceover to be the loudest the most prominent because that's where the information is the music bed is just there for fluff and for you know for niceness um so and for mood obviously it's it's supporting the mood of the piece um it's not that it doesn't play a role but it's a it's a supporting role the 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 primary role is the voiceover obviously so what we can do um like a lot of people just do go to volume and let's just slam this down to around minus 20 and that's great patient rate representing the latest milestone in toshiba's drive for excellence in ct this new scanner rides on a sophisticated vibration dampening gantry stable enough to withstand and that's fine nothing wrong with that except it's it's a bit, it's a blunt 
tool. It's not very surgical, it's not precision. What you're doing when you're lowering the volume is you're lowering the volume of everything. So within the, within the audio track, there are high frequencies, mids, you know, low frequencies. Um, there are loud parts, quiet parts. So it's a bit brute force to lower everything at the same volume. Um, obviously knowing what we know now about dynamics and EQing, we want to maybe reduce the loud parts, but we don't want to reduce the bits that are already soft. We want to take off the highs because they're cutting through. We want to cut off the mids a bit because that's where it's conflicting with the, the voiceover. We want to take out a lot of the muddiness from the, the low frequencies too. So we looked at the... Um, at the high pass and the low pass we can reduce So between, let's see, it's between, let's bring that up to about 500. It's not a great tool. It's obviously bugging out right there, but let's bring that up to around, yeah, 500. So between 500 and 3K, is the frequency band that we have allowing the music to pass through. This drive for excellence in CT. This new scanner... It sounds a bit radio, it's, it's a bit... It's a bit, um, it's a bit dull, and we can bring this back down again. ...rides on a sophisticated vibration dampening gantry, stable enough to withstand 20 Gs of force. It's equipped with a mega cool x-ray tube offering the high... So we're still getting that music bed. We've taken a lot of the highs, taken a lot of the lows off, and we're just, you know, sort of left with the essence. Um, and using the volume to reduce the, uh, the loudness. But... Again, it's a bit crude, a bit ugly. There is a band pass audio unit, which does much the same thing. Um, you can set the center band and you set the, so let's say we had what, 503k, so, um, if I bring this, about 500, about there, 3k, so I, if I do this, this is allowing this band to pass through the filter, or the low ends are being filtered out, so essentially it's doing what the high pass and the low pass do, it's just doing it in one filter. However, it adds a little bit of resonance, it's not a flat curve and a flat uh, slope, it adds a little bit of resonance, which I don't like. Um, Highest heat dissipation rate. Representing the latest milestone in Toshiba's drive for excellence in CT. This new scanner rides on a sophisticated vibration dampening gantry, stable enough to withstand 20 Gs of force. It's equipped with a mega cool x-ray tube offering the highest heat dissipation rate. Representing the latest milestone in Toshiba's drive for excellence in CT. This new scanner rides on a sophisticated vibration dampening gantry, stable enough to withstand 20 Gs of force. It's equipped with a mega cool x-ray tube offering the highest heat dissipation rate. Representing the latest milestone in Toshiba's drive for excellence in CT. This new scanner rides on a sophisticated vibration dampening gantry. So it's, it's useful and if you want to trim out a lot of the the mud just to capture or keep the essence of the track and it's just knocked back in the uh, in the mix the band pass does what the high pass and low pass do in one in one filter with a slightly better um graph readout but it does add that little bit of resonance it which is a boost of those frequencies where the 
cutoff starts. So um, it's okay. Now, um, you, let's see what we've got dynamics processing. We've looked at the AU dynamics processor and the AU multiband compressor. We can look at the, and we looked at the dynamics. In Adobe provides dynamics plugin and dynamics processing. So the, we looked at the dynamics in the uh, previous track, which gives us the comp, the gate, the expander, and the limiter. And that's that was good. That's pretty useful. The dynamics processing just gives us a slightly more control. It gives us this graph that we can we can look at. Um, Which we may yeah maybe more familiar with from from those those earlier examples. Tree so, stable enough to withstand twenty Gs of force. So this blue area is again showing us the the amplitude of the of the track that we're compressing right now. The graph is linear right now. We've not applied any any compression. This is the um, the ratio. And you can see it's a straight rate, it's an elbow, it's not a smooth, if you hit the spline curves, you can then make it, um, make it a smooth roll off. And this is our cutoff, this is our threshold. And this is also a expander, so if we go into this side of the, of the graph, we're now into you know, expansion, um, again, which is, not something I want to touch on today. Let's just keep it on this side of the of the graph and let's look at um, the compressor. So we're going to apply some similar numbers. Um, so again, you can add points. You can start doing much like the curves. If you're familiar with the curves and the color correction, we're doing the same thing with audio levels, inputs and outputs. It's equipped with a mega cool X ray. So we can see the amount the of compression being applied rate. because we've reached over this. Milestone. We've reached over this threshold and we can see the amount of compression being applied. On in Toshiba's drive for excellence in CT. This new scanner rides on a sophisticated vibration dampening gantry, stable let's, enough to. Let's mute this again. So. Let's reset the volume. So, like we talked about before, the, the, the dynamics compressor is reducing the loud peaks but retaining the quiet areas. So what we're doing here is all those loud peaks, we're, we're reducing the volume, but all the subtle nuance in some of the softer layers of, the, uh, of this recorded music are intact. It's a it's subtle and it's a it's it's a little less brute force than just slamming down the volume. So we can make up the gain. Let's go into our settings. We have a bit more detail here. Um, we have some noise gating, which we won't mess with. So we can maybe reduce the settings quite brutally and then bring up some output gain just so it's a more even but softer level. So the input gain, we're reducing the amount of we're turning the volume down before it hits the compressor. 
which is a, an easy way just to sort of get to a, a um, an initial level. We can. This begins to bring some expansion in. Again, like I said, this. You can mess around with these curves. I don't want to get into that too much right now. Let's let's add a point. If you hit command, you can add a point where you want. Otherwise, you you're adding it numerically. And so, if I wanted the roll off to be a bit more abrupt. You can see now I've got a bit more of a sharper angle here. Or if I want to bring this up and then... So if we bring in the... Anna rides on a sophisticated vibration dampening gantry, stable enough to withstand 20 Gs of force. It's equipped with a mega cool X-ray tube offering the highest heat dissipation rate, representing the latest milestone in Toshiba's drive for excellence in CT. This new scanner rides on a sophisticated vibration dampening gantry, stable enough to withstand 20 Gs of force. It's equipped with a mega cool X-ray tube offering the highest heat dissipation rate, representing the latest milestone in Toshiba's drive for excellence in CT. This new scanner rides on a sophisticated vibration dampening gantry, stable enough to withstand 20 Gs of force. So we can also add a little bit of um, band pass after it just to maybe top and tail those frequencies just to clear out all the lower end mud and clear out any uh, high end hiss that might be sort of competing. We've reduced the level so much that none of it's really competing with the voiceover now, but we've done it in a fairly sophisticated manner without just slamming the volume down. So I think you still get a lot of the the tonal quality of the strings and the piano that's in there, but, you, it, but it's not quite so, you know, it's obviously not so loud and in our face. So, uh, well, there you go. That about wraps it up. Um, I hope you found this useful. I hope you found some uh, some information you can use to help make your audio mixes better. Um, the free tools or the uh, the uh, stock tools inside of uh, Adobe Premiere obviously have a, a lot of power. You can do a lot with them, and um, it really really helps make the most out of your your audio tracks. Um, so, if you have any questions um, about today's topic, uh, you can the the channels at the side you can uh, hit me up there uh, leave a comment um, and I will answer any comments or questions uh, if you have any ideas about um, other topics you'd like to see covered um, in coming um, coming episodes then please do leave a comment do your social diligence like share subscribe follow all that kind of stuff whatever the the hip kids are doing these days um, so with that said I'll bid thee farewell and until next time on creative briefings uh, be creative have fun uh, thanks for watching bye